I want to see whether Joe Biden can do it. I really do, because I don't I know the media has been in overdrive and the campaign has too, trying to convince us that he's had no senior moments, that these are, quote, cheap fakes, according to Karine, Karine Jean-Pierre. I that, that's a lie. I, it's not to say no one's ever right. taken a Biden moment out of context, but there have been scores of Biden senior moments. What I couldn't care less whether one or two are misrepresented. We know the man is having some serious age related impairment. So I'm very interested in whether he can do it. This isn't like a state of the union where he just has to read. He has to be nimble. He has to fight. He has to w- respond no, no, to no Trump's attacks. No notes, right? Exactly. And no help from your team, even in the breaks. And I'm also interested to see whether Trump can do it. Trump has gotten a little rambly in his older age. That is a fair criticism of him. He too forgets words here and there, but it's nothing on the scale of what we've seen from Biden. But we saw him during his first presidential debate in 2020 not be able to keep himself composed. You know, the the old joke that, you know, your kids say, knock, knock, who's there? Interrupt him, moo, right? Like, like you, he wasn't able to hold himself together. He had to keep interrupting Biden. I realize they're going to turn the mics off. That was a mistake by Joe Biden. He should have insisted that the mics remain on because that hurt Trump. Trump being Trump and too interrupty hurts Trump. He should have let him let him hurt himself, give him enough rope if that's what he wants to do. In any event, I'd like to see whether Trump can contain himself and also whether he's good Trump or mean Trump or a combination <laughs> of both, right? If he could right. be charming Trump, it would be such a huge win. But if Biden's being a douchebag, then he needs to be a little douchey himself or get the, right. the crass analysis. Anyway, those are all the reasons I'm excited. What do you think? Yeah, look, I, I, I agree with you. In fact, I, I know Maggie Haberman from the New York Times has reported, but a bunch of others now have as well, that Trump is actually mindful he in, I, interrupted too much in the first debate. There's a big story out of the New York Times today about the Biden prep, that it, it's kind of free form and they're going over it's amazing and stuff. But Biden is, it's impossible to predict Donald Trump. It, it's hard to game play against him where Biden's actually fairly predictable. And if Trump doesn't come off like a brain biblical donkey, so to speak, on, on stage and Biden has a senior moment, I think Trump wins. Mm, well, that's the other thing. It's just like someone could emerge the winner and someone someone could lose the debate. Like If somebody emerges the clear loser, that will make massive news. If Biden freezes, I mean, every every campaign staffer will have an oh shit moment. You know, like right. we we had um, we just ordered the cardiac, you know, resuscitators. <laughs> right? The you know those. I mean, I, when I worry about heart health. They're going to need those for every single one of his right. staffers well, if he has you know, a senior moment just, on that stage. As an aside, I, I got to paint the scene here locally for us in Atlanta as well because while two presidents are at the CNN Center debating or, or Turner Broadcast debating. Just down the street from them will be the U.S. Olympic soccer team in a debut match. So gridlock in the city. Nobody's going to be able to get in or out. In fact, CNN asked if I would come be on TV. It's like, absolutely not. There's I don't want to be part of the Donner Party getting stuck on the side of the road, unable to <laughs> escape. It, it's The whole thing is going to be a mess for those of us See, in Atlanta. Eric Erickson, you should just done with what my brilliant brother Pete Kelly did. He lives in Atlanta too, and he arrives here with me. I'm at the beach now in New Jersey where I go with my family in the summers. He oh, arrives here today. You. Get out of town. Yeah, so I'm an hour outside the city. I have no desire to go anywhere near the city on Thursday. Yeah, I know. I'm going to watch it on TV, but we're actually going to do live coverage of it for our audience right after, so please tune in for that, youtube.com slash Megan Kelly. Let's talk about that New York Times article. I think this is the one you're referring to, Inside Biden's Camp David Debate mm-hmm. Prep by Katie Rogers. It's so interesting, I have to say. Like, good luck. I really feel for his his team. I do. I, I'm sure the stakes are very high, but here's a bit from the article. President Biden's aides are working to position him as a campaign season fighter who can counterpunch on the fly and combat voters' concerns about his age. At Camp David, a movie theater and an airplane hangar have been outfitted with lights and production equipment to create a mock debate stage. At least 16 current and former aides summoned from Washington and Wilmington whiz back and forth on golf carts to join President Biden in strategy sessions. They're now entering the fifth day of preps, hoping he can shake off the rust 
uh, that often comes with being an incumbent on the defense. Now, as much as I want to mock this, Eric, I can't help but say it's smart. Preparation right. helps. And I know Trump is saying he's not preparing. I actually hope it, that that's not true. Look, I, I I know Trump is preparing. He prepares in different ways than Biden. Biden being a standard predictable politician, he goes through these. But, you know, Donald Trump has had a series of meetings with different individuals. He's vetting for vice president and for policy reasons to discuss policies he may want to bring up, one-liners he may want to bring up. But he doesn't tend to stand and do these. Now, he did with Chris Christie in 2016 and 2020, but obviously that's off the table now. Christie's not helping him. But I don't know, and in his sense, apparently, he doesn't think that those sorts of stand-up debates really helped him as much as thinking about one-liners, thinking about policies, thinking about responses. With Biden, though, he's kind of got to go through the rigors of this to build the stamina, in addition to adjusting his sleep schedule so that he can be awake from 9 to 11 o'clock on Thursday Mm -hmm. night, Uh, in addition to having his aides come in. Remember, historically – Every incumbent president has a bad first debate. Jimmy Carter against Reagan, Reagan against Mondale, uh, George H. H. W. Bush against Clinton, Clinton against Dole. Uh, They all tend to have a first bad debate and then they rebound. Biden's debates are so spread out. If he doesn't do a good first debate, it could be fatal to him actually uh, staying on the nomination. Yeah. Uh, The Obama first debate in, in, um, well, in 2020, 12, right? It was in 2012 mm-hmm. when he was running for a re-election was a disaster against Mitt Romney to the point where the papers were reporting about how he went backstage and a lot of his advisors were saying that was not good and he didn't believe them. He was used to being told how wonderful he was his whole life. And Michelle actually pulled him aside and said, you sucked out there tonight. And she right. was the one who kicked him in the pants to where he had to turn it around and actually put in the work to do better on the next debate. Yeah, it was remarkable. And of course, you know, you had George W. Bush and his George H. W. Bush looking at his watch with uh, in his debate. It, it's first presidents in their first debates tend not to. Ronald Reagan very famously was the one where age caught up with him and he had to come back in the second debate with his uh, won't hold Walter Mondale's youth and inexperience against him uh, as a rebound. And it's tough because you are in the cloistered bubble surrounded by yes men all the time. But to a degree, Donald Trump living in Mar-a-Lago has as well for the last several years. So both men have rust to shake off, not just for age, but for they get surrounded with so many people who always tell them they're infallible. And here they're going to be confronted, not just with an opponent, but with someone who very viscerally hates his guts on both sides. So Frank Luntz, uh, you know, a mutual former colleague of our, our both of yours and mine at Fox and elsewhere, he does all this, uh, you know, actual polling of focus groups before these big events. And he has an interesting op-ed out talking about how in all the years of him covering these debates and reactions to them, one of his big takeaways is what matters is not so much who wins on the policy exchanges, but who gets like a moment, who who is memorable. And uh, he, he wrote about, for example, Trump's line to Hillary um, she says something like, if I if I become president, or she, she's like, if Trump becomes president, something, something. And he said, if I become president, you'd be in jail. And <laughs> while the media class was horrified by it, you know, oh, he's going to weaponize the Justice Department against her. Hello. <laughs> um, the, he was pointing out that his focus group didn't have that reaction. And that if, if you're just like the memorable one in a way that's something not like interrupting cow, right? But like, you have a zinger, you have something that made the people laugh. You had just a moment that made you connect with them. And he was saying the thing about that moment with Trump was it showed Frank's focus group. Here's this outsider who's not afraid to throw a brass knuckled punch at this beloved establishment figure of the left. You know, he wasn't afraid to punch below the belt. And they, it wasn't so much that they liked crassness. It was just that they liked something very different who would challenge authority for them. Yeah, he's right. And I'm, I'm always impressed with how Frank does the focus groups. And you have that one moment where someone connects, they come across as likable, maybe somewhat empathetic. Like Joe Biden did have a moment in his debate with Trump where he came off as more empathetic. Uh, he showed the lie to that after the evacuation of Afghanistan and never got it back. Can one of these men do that. The, the thing with Donald Trump is he comes across in a way that a lot of people, he says publicly the things they say privately, and the mm-hmm. media that reacts to it in such a hostile way, 
it actually amplifies what he said and, and reinforces to people that he said something they liked because so many members of the media are so hostile to him. When you have the positive reaction when you watch the debate and you're like, oh, I, I can't believe he said that. That's kind of funny. And the media is outraged by it. Well, suddenly they're the jerks, not Trump. And you then become more, have more affinity for Trump. It, it's kind of been the secret to his success in these debates and his campaign style throughout is how the media reacts to him more than how people react to him. Let me tell you a story about a guy named Leo Grillo. Leo was on a road trip and came across a Doberman. Now, this dog was severely underweight and clearly in trouble. Leo rescued the dog and named him Delta. Sadly, Delta was just one of so many animals that needed help. And this inspired Leo to start Delta Rescue, the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. They have rescued thousands of dogs, cats, and horses from the wilderness, and they provide their animals with shelter, love, safety, a home. April marked 45 years since Leo rescued Delta. Delta Rescue relies solely on contributions. If you would like caring for these animals to be part of your legacy, speak with your estate planner, because there are tax benefits too. You could grow your estate while letting your love for animals live well into the future. Check out the estate planning tab on their website to learn more and speak with your advisor. We call da dog a man's best friend for a reason. You could help those who need it most. Visit DeltaRescue.org today to learn more. That's DeltaRescue.org. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.